presented me the opportunity to say a few words in this year uh, at the World TV um, event on uh, Panopticanism, especially dedicated to the figure of the uh, Deco. Uh, as you know, uh, my name is Joan Pio. I come originally uh, from Angola. Since uh, I arrived in Ireland, uh, I became involved with a network of organizations promoting uh, refugees, uh, asylum seekers, and migrant rights uh, in Ireland. Uh, at the time, if we remember, you know, uh, in the late phase of the uh, 90s, uh, Ireland still uh, somehow appeared to be a kind of uh, homogenic uh, society, and uh, part of the response uh, we got uh, from some people and part of uh, the, the press wasn't that encouraging uh, for people uh, coming to settle uh, in this country. Um, I, in 1998, I founded the Association of the Angolan Community uh, in Ireland, which was meant to promote the integration of Angola in this country and uh, also facilitating a, ser a, ser a sector service and uh, linking up with uh, groups of uh, similar aims. Um, in 2002, uh, I was again a founder of the organization Angolan Service B uh, in Ireland, and uh, I'm currently uh, the chairperson of the Angolan community uh, in Ireland. Uh, as we all know, uh, the Pan-Africanist movement uh, uh, was very much influenced uh, by development in the uh, African diaspora, especially in America, which uh, eventually uh, came to uh, influence back uh, the nationalist movement in Africa, which resulted in the independence of uh, uh, most countries <coughs> in Africa. In my childhood, in my homeland uh, of Angola, very soon I became very acquainted with the environment uh, uh, of the uh, Pan-Africanist movement in Africa. And one element which caught uh, was, uh, my attention uh, was uh, listening to radio stations, you know, there was a program, uh, even during colonial days, that was de dedicated uh, to those people fighting oppression uh, across the globe, especially in Africa. And uh, there was a program where you used to hear uh, some uh, very uh, emotional uh, songs, uh, sort of choirs, like people were crying, you know, and people kind of squeeze my fear as a, as a kid, I would feel very uh, terrified. And uh, here later, so I realized that uh, those songs uh, was uh, from people in South Africa uh, protesting, you know, against the abuse, the hostility, and the discrimination. Um, we know that uh, the Pan-Africanism movement in Africa um, was uh, as well influenced by the event of the time because the world was divided into blocks and uh, the same way we had the Moroccan block and uh, the Casablanca block, uh, uh, block. In the specific case of uh, Angola, uh, contrary to most countries in Africa, in the fighting against the colonialism, we have a kind of a three fronts that we were led, that was led by three different leaders. So I'm talking about uh, Agustin Neto, uh, Jonas Savimbe, and uh, Orlando Roberto. Uh, Agustin Neto uh, went to play uh, a key role in the, uh, in the movement, in the, in the Pan-Africanist uh, uh, movement, uh, because uh, contrary to, to most opinion of the time, uh, he believed that uh, uh, the fighting didn't just uh, involve the 
relative uh, uh, population, you know, but also people of all uh, races, and uh, it uh, played a big uh, deal uh, of a difference uh, of not limiting the, the fighting in, Ang in Angola, but also uh, supporting uh, other people, which eventually result in the independence of uh, Zimbabwe, uh, Namibia, and the end of uh, apartheid in South Africa. So, talking uh, about uh, Steve uh, Biko, so we know the role he, he played in, in, in awareness of uh, consciousness in the South, South Africa, in inspiring uh, the fight uh, against the uh, wi uh, white rule do do dominance at the time. Uh, but uh, what uh, uh, we can sum up uh, with all that now is are the gains, you know, when that we, we can get from his ideas, his, his, uh, his, his teaching, especially in a ever-changing world, you know, <coughs> where we are facing with uh, several uh, um, global issues uh, affecting, you know, uh, people's lives, uh, especially uh, talking about uh, our Africans, you know, being those who are still back home and uh, we who find ourselves in the diaspora. And uh, one <coughs> challenge we have, and as my comrade uh, Luke addressed in his speech, it is about uh, uh, organizing uh, and first of all mobilizing people, you know, and get them organized so that uh, on a consistent, resilient <coughs> way uh, we can carry on uh, with our uh, um, fighting, if, if you can say so. And one of the concerns we, we have here in, in Ireland, because we are here, uh, I prefer to limit to Ireland, is that uh, as people like me and many others that have been involved for so many, uh, so much time in the uh, inequality, fighting against uh, racism and uh, uh, promoting in integration, we are part of a first uh, uh, generation, you know, and the concern is to motivate uh, younger people so that they can join the project, project so that we can make a contribution not just here in the diaspora and as well inspiring, you know, uh, those values uh, back home because we, no we still know what is the situation that is going on uh, back in Africa that has all that uh, our ancestors and forefathers fought, uh, most of the targets are still there to, to be reached. So uh, this is, uh, and, I and I feel that I would like to, uh, to make to all of us to, to carry on on this route and try to benefit as much uh, as possible of the teaching of people like Steve Biko and the other icons that inspiring transformations in society. Thank you very much.